So our friend Renzi was, uh, when he was in high school, he was obese, really, really fat, overweight, sick, had a high chance of getting type 2 diabetes. Um, and during that time, he lost some friends, a good, good close friend to him passed away, also family members passed away. So he was f sick, fat, depressed, sad, lonely, and what he calls the laughing stock of his school. Right? This was a couple years ago, back in uh, 2010, I think. And um, he was in the bottom of the barrel, the worst it could possibly be. And he, he's still a bit, you know, it's several years later, and he still has a lot of resentment and ties to those experiences. But an amazing thing has happened. He's transformed himself. He's lost 110 pounds. He is getting ready to do a bodybuilding show. Interestingly, he went from being the laughing stock of his old school to now where he's in school and he has a ton of other guys coming up to him wanting to be more like him, right? They're asking him, how is it that your muscles look so good? How is it that your, your body is developed in such a way that you're gonna go and, and compete as a bodybuilder? I wanna do that too. Please, uh, what's your name again? Renzo, Rennie, help me out. Not only that, but Rennie is being approached by women all over the place. Fat, sick, depressed kid that nobody likes and is the laughing stock and his friends and family are dying all around him to now having the admiration of his peers and women are flocking to his side. The problem is that he still doesn't see himself as he presents himself. He still sees himself as that thick, sick, fat, depressed kid that nobody likes. I totally understand. I know this sounds weird. A lot of people watching this will be like, dude, what is your problem, man? You're, you're in good shape now, and women want to talk to you, and you're still complaining like you're a sick, fat kid? What's up? I could tell you, and the reason why I took your question is because I've experienced the exact same thing. Now, the context is the same, but the content is different. And, and it's been a challenge for me, and what I'm talking about is coming from being deeply in debt, broke, like can't put gas in the car, really poor, <laughs> right? Just, you know, five, six years ago to now where I can comfortably say that I have the things that I need. I can spend money on nice things today, right? But I've had a difficult road, not only in digging out of the debt and the destitution that I came from, but in accepting it when things started turning good. Things started getting good for me, right? In the same way, and I'm using this in contrast to your story. This, things started getting good for me. In other words, like I didn't have to worry about how I'm gonna pay the bills. In fact, I've got extra, a lot extra left over at the end of the month. Probably about 18 months ago, you know, about a year and a half ago. Things started getting good, and that's when the anxiety came in. That's when I started worrying. That's when I didn't feel good about myself anymore. I knew who I was when I was broke, but now I'm confused. Or, you know, about that time I started getting confused, and I spoke to a good mentor, friend, and therapist of mine, Dr. Glazier. And at that time, I shared these ideas with him, what's going on with me, and he, he said one thing. He, ma he made one statement. He said that, you have to catch up with your reality. And at first it didn't mean much to me because I was like, dude, I'm asking you for help here and you're telling me I need to catch up to my reality. And he started pointing out all the great things in my life. He said, you know, you've got this, you've got that, you've got that you're not broke anymore, you're not destitute anymore, you're not that guy anymore. Look around you. And I'd look around and I'm like, yeah, I mean, things are good, but still, when is it all going to fall down? When is it all going to collapse? When am I going to go back to having to, you know, beg for, to borrow money to put gas in my car? When is that going to happen again? And he shakes his head. He says, look, you got to catch up to what's actually really going on. And the way you're going to do it is to get very uncomfortable with spending your money like you're a wealthy man. Wait a second. So I'm, you know, here I am, like I just got a little bit of money and I'm starting to save it up a little bit. And he says, go and buy furniture for your wife. I, I, you know, I mentioned that, you know, Colleen would like some new chairs around the dinner, dinner table. You know, we've got old, like, we had like those chairs that you, you flip open, you know, <laughs> what do you call those portable chairs? 
you know. So we had those around the table, and I'm like, our chairs are good. Our chairs are fine. Why do I need to go and spend six, seven hundred dollars on, on chairs? Come on. So go and buy her the chairs. And it wasn't because of the chair. And me, you know, I'm so against debt and, and spending for frivolously, frivolously, you know. And that was the the old version of me, the version of me that was fearful. But when he's like, go spend almost a thousand dollars on chairs, I'm like, dude, you're out of your mind. And the reason why he asked me to do those things, and what has been a fruit of me getting uncomfortable by doing those things, is I'm starting to behave like someone who is living the reality that I'm currently living. What you've got to do is you've got to start acting, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it feels fake. I didn't want to buy chairs for $700. Even if it feels fake, Go and do the things that are associated with someone who has your reality. Those guys who want to be like you, you know what? Puff up your chest and say, men, I'm going to take you under my tutelage. I'm going to take you under my wings and I'm going to help you, right? Me, who was sick, fat, depressed and nobody liked, is now helping other people? Yes, go and help those guys. Those girls that want to hang out with you and talk to you, I know it feels uncomfortable. I know you feel like you're ugly and fat. Take them up on the offer. Take a couple of them out. Speak to them. Do the things that life is prompting you to do because life is letting you know that you're a different person. You've done what I'm always telling people to do. Become a different version of yourself. Become a stronger version of yourself. You've done that physically out here, but inside, you're still, like I was, broke. You're just broke of spirit. I was broke of pocket. We've got to step outside of our comfort zone when the world is asking us to. Even though there may be guilt associated with doing it. You might feel like you don't deserve those beautiful girls that are talking to you. Just like I didn't believe I deserved nice chairs around the dinner table. But we've got to do it. Not because of the thing, but because of who it's going to force us to become. So that's it my man. Congratulations. Good luck. Step out there and allow life to give you the beautiful things that you've earned. Good luck.